I think for a lot of my friends at the time, this album was just a little bit too heavy for them. So outwardly, I was like, yeah, no, it's okay. We can start a pop punk band. But inwardly, I was like, oh, you wimps. What's up, Pizza Lunchables? And welcome to another episode of Guarsenio's High School CD Booklet Review. The show where I'm going to review all the albums in this CD booklet, and we're probably going to have a good time making fun of all the red eyeshadow bands that are in there. And today we're talking about arguably the coolest one of those bands, Bleeding Through, and their album, This Is Love, This Is Murderous. Bleeding Through was actually the first band that a record store employee told me I needed to check out. Actually, it wasn't a record store. It was a Sam Goody in the Cherry Creek Mall. But yeah, I had originally gone there to get Atreyu's Suicide Notes and Butterfly Kisses, and when I went to check out, a buff teenager with a neck tattoo was like, nah, bro, this is not what you want. Go back over to the metal section. Go to B, get Bleeding Through's, this love is murderous. That's right. He said, this love is murderous. No one ever fucking said the name of this album right. Even I, I took me three takes to do it. This love is murderous. Oh, right. This is love. This is murderous. But yeah, anyway, I went and got the album because I wanted him to think I was cool and to not kick my ass if I saw him at a show. When I went back to check out, he had two more CDs on the counter. He had Ferret Records, Progression Through Regression, and Trust Kills, Blood, Sweat, in 10 Years. Looking back, that dude probably made commission and was just taking advantage of a nervous kid, but those three albums changed my entire musical journey. In one afternoon, I found Every Time I Die, The Bronx, Kill Switch Engage, Blood Has Been Shed, Misery Signals, Martyr AD, Most Precious Blood, Walls of Jericho, 18 Visions, Throwdown, Poison the Well! So yeah, thanks, asshole. To me, this is the movie quote hardcore record. I know all the old heads are gonna get mad at me because other bands have done it before them, like 18 Visions, blah, blah, blah. When I think about movie quotes in music, this is the album that comes to mind. Probably because Boondock Saints was the first movie I watched because I heard a clip of it in a song. There was a firefight! So we should get into this right now. The Boondock Saints is not a good movie. I know it's quoted in a lot of hardcore music that we all love, but it's a mess. What is also a mess, but actually good, and related to the Boondock Saints is the documentary about the making of that movie called Overnight. It is a wild story. An asshole Boston bartender sells his script to a drunk Harvey Weinstein and it all falls apart. Wow, huge shocker. The one time there's a documentary made about Harvey Weinstein's bad behavior in the early 2000s, it's because it happened to a man. But either way, my theory is the goodwill and positive reviews of the documentary about the making of Boondock Saints got warped through a horrible game of telephone. And thus eventually people weren't hearing the documentary about Boondock Saints is good, they were just hearing Boondock Saints is good. But I don't know, I'm trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. If you genuinely like the Boondock Saints, please start going to therapy. I know you haven't been going because you like the Boondock Saints. But yeah, let's talk about the record. This is exactly what I wanted all of my high school bands to sound like, and none of them ever did. I've used the phrase platonic ideal a lot on this show, but this album, I think, is the platonic ideal of the genre of metalcore. It hits hard like hardcore, but it has the technicality and bombast of heavy metal. Like what hardcore frontman didn't want to sound like this guy? A perfect mid-range angry scream. This record mixing and tone wise doesn't sound great, unfortunately. Like I can tell there are cool riffs on this record, but the frequencies are buried, my dudes. But I'm not gonna hold that against him because honestly in 2003, it was really hard to have a good sounding hardcore album without having lots of money. But yeah, let's talk about this album art. Gross. I think for a lot of my friends at the time, this album was just a little bit too heavy for them. And so they didn't want to play music like it. So outwardly, I was like, yeah, no, it's okay. We can start a pop punk band. But inwardly, I was like, oh, you wimps. But yeah, in summation, this was still a really fun listen. The keyboards on this album, shockingly pretty good. I was ready to roast them because most synth hardcore from 2003 is no, 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 no. But it added a lot of welcome texture and intensity. Good job, guys. The lyrics, though, they're awful. Go Google them. You'll see why. Time and a place, man. But yeah, that does it for this week's episode. If you want to let me know what you thought of the album or be that guy who explains to me why lyrics that are this angry at women are okay, there's the comment section. Next week, we're listening to Haymaker by Throwdown, so I'm going to drink Dr. Pepper all oh, goddamn day. It's two minutes to late night.